Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you my complete post-processing workflow to produce this basic daytime hyperlapse. <music> to help organize my files, I use a free program called Post Haste. I give the shoot a meaningful title and the software creates a series of nested folders based on my own templates for raw, intermediate and final render files. I then copy and paste my raw files to the raw folder for the particular camera I used. I next open up the raw files in LR time-lapse. Once the files and metadata have been loaded, I'll first preview the hyperlapse to see if there are any major problems. I then begin to follow the visual workflow by first clicking on the keyframes wizard. Here the software has automatically selected three keyframes at the beginning, middle and end of the sequence. If I'm happy with this, I'll click save. I then move over to Adobe Lightroom and import the files. Note that I'm only adding the files from the folders I previously created and not copying and thus duplicating them. During import, Lightroom will apply a preset for me, which I use to achieve a consistent look in all of my videos. The keyframe images have been given four stars by LR Timelapse, so I select only these by using the filter at the bottom right hand corner. I then press D to move into the develop module to apply some basic adjustments, beginning with lens corrections, basic adjustments, and finally detail. I'll set the white balance by using the eyedropper on a neutral grey part of the image where RGB values are approximately 50%. Using the histogram, I'll push exposure to the right without clipping the highlights and create some contrast by adjusting the highlights and shadow sliders. I then make some small adjustments to the present sliders, either values of 5 or 10. You need to go very light here, otherwise you'll introduce contrast flicker. Then in the Details tab, I'll add a small amount of raw sharpening and mask while holding down the Option key. I'll also add a small amount of noise reduction and check the shadows. I then copy and paste these settings by clicking on the Scripts icon at the top. The middle image here is brighter than the other two, so I'll bring down the exposure back to zero. Once I'm happy with the adjustments to each image, I'll again select all and save the metadata to file, ready to re-import back into LR Timelapse. Once in LR Timelapse, I'll reload the metadata and allow the software to work its magic and create the transitions between the keyframes. Next, I'll click the Visual Previews button and wait for the software to generate the previews which does take some time. After previewing the adjustments, I'll deflicker the hyperlapse on a low setting, usually 10, just to remove any flicker that may be present. Again, this is the time to give yourself a screen break. Once the deflickering is finished, I'll preview and save. Returning now to Lightroom for the final time, I'll change the filter so I can view all the images. Select all, then update the image's metadata by clicking on Read Metadata from Files from the drop-down menu. Once all the images have been updated, I'll apply my own metadata preset for adding copyright information. The images are now ready for export to Adobe After Effects. I choose the LR Timelapse Export feature and choose the Intermediates folder in the Projects folder I created earlier. As I won't be making any further color adjustments, I export at full resolution JPEG files. Once the JPEGs have finished exporting, I open Adobe After Effects and create a new composition from footage. I navigate to the folder containing the files and click on the first image, making sure the Create Composition and Import to JPEG Sequence tick boxes are checked. Once the composition is created, 
I immediately save it by overwriting the After Effects file previously created by Post Haste. I then rename the composition Master and drag it to the Create New Composition icon to create a new nested composition and protect the master. I'll then rename the new composition Warp 1 and apply Warp Stabilizer for the first time. As this is a hyperlapse, I'll leave Smooth Motion selected but change the smoothness to 5%, change the method to Perspective and check Preserve Scale. I'll also change the framing to Stabilize Only and wait for the results. Once the effect has been applied, I'll save and then RAM preview the sequence by pressing the spacebar. I'll usually repeat this at least a few times. Here I've applied Warp Stabilizer twice with these settings and then a third time with a smoothness setting of 25%. When I'm happy with the stabilization, I'll create a final composition from the previous composition as before and rename this Crop and Sharpen. In this hyperlapse, there's a judder in the metal pillars in the bottom right hand corner, probably caused by a slight misplacement of the camera while shooting. I'm therefore cropping out this section of the hyperlapse. Pressing the command and right left arrow keys, I locate where I want to trim the composition and then press Shift Command D to make the cut. I then move to the other end of the hyperlapse and do the same so that both start and end points are equal distance from the edge of the skywalk. I like my hyperlapses to be 5 or 6 seconds long. For this short physical movement, 5 seconds is enough. I therefore will speed up the hyperlapse so it's exactly 5 seconds long. Next I need to change the composition settings to match the time of the hyperlapse and set the dimensions to 8K UHD, which is possible using the images shot with my D850s. With pixels to spare on such large 8K plus photos, I downscale to reveal more of the image whenever possible by pressing S for scale, whilst holding down the command key for greater control. I then preview the hyperlapse several times, checking each corner carefully to ensure that no black edges from the stabilization are visible. If I notice any, I'll increase the scale slightly. I'll next adjust position by pressing P and rotation by pressing R, depending on the hyperlapse. Here I'm moving the composition down to include more of the sky and less of the skywalk floor. Often, as is the case here, I need to set keyframes at the beginning and end of the composition to get the exact adjustments I need. Once I've set these and am happy with the new start and end positions, I'll once again preview the hyperlapse several times, checking for black edges from the earlier stabilization. Finally, I sharpen the hyperlapse with the unsharp mask effect. Usually setting the amount to 75 gives me a well sharpened image. Once I've again saved the project, I'll preview the final hyperlapse looking for any imperfections in the stabilization before exporting to Adobe Media Encoder. I prefer to use this software to render my videos rather than After Effects as I'm able to continue working on other projects while rendering if I need to. I have created templates for both 8K and 4K UHD which output at maximum quality using the Apple ProRes 422 HQ codec so I simply select the 8K template from the drop-down menu. To choose a file name, I navigate to the last rendered video and copy this name. Then navigate to the appropriate folder in the current renders folder and then change the final digit. To produce the 4K video, I duplicate the 8K, changing the template, which will downsize the resolution to 4K, but maintain the same maximum quality and video codec. Once the videos have been rendered and checked, the final stage before uploading to my stock video portfolio is tagging the files as part of my file management system. I'll tag the videos with a type, a 
a detailed location and use an orange ready tag until I've uploaded. Once the files are successfully uploaded, this is changed to a green submitted tag. Well, that's my complete workflow for producing this 8K hyperlapse and others like it, all of which are available exclusively for download from the curated hyperlapse collection at my Pond5 online portfolio. I hope you learned something from watching this video or at least found it interesting to see how someone else works. I'm planning on making more workflow videos, including behind the scenes whilst out shooting. If you'd like to see videos like this, consider subscribing or leaving a comment below. Your feedback and support is always welcome. So, from a beautiful but far too warm Bangkok, Thailand, that's all for now.